This week, the guys have decided to let me back on the show because I begged and pleaded with them, uh, and they bribed me with really great cigars. We're going to be smoking a Byron this week. We're going to talk about the Cigar Aficionado Top 25 and what may be in some of our favorites for 2017. We'll tease that a little bit and talk about our Stogies of the Week. So stay tuned. This is the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. A hat tip, can we play it? Yeah, one more time. Can I hear a... Yes! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the dirt! Guests and friends here in studio, including a regular cast of characters, Mr. Joe Hollywood to my right. How are you? That's awesome. Joe D's here. Rain Man's here. Happy What's going on, I Joe D? Round table discussions. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Hey, welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Astorian, joined in studio by the regular cast of characters who actually let me back on the show. I thank them for that. Mr. Joe Hollywood is here. How are you? Welcome. I am good. Happy New Year. Good. Happy New Year. It's the first Stoic Geek show of the year. It's great. I'm excited. What was la- last Monday was uh, uh, New Year's New Day. New Year's Day. New Year's Day. I eased into the New Year for sure. You eased into it? Yes. Mimosas. Yes. Brunch. <laughs> Bloody Marys. That's what uh, I did. Yeah, it was good. 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 Rayman's here. Yeah, boys. Joe D, what's going on? <laughs> Happy New Year. Welcome Happy back. New Year. Uh, you provided the cigars this week, which uh, if you provide cigars at this level every week, I will <laughs> make more appearances on the show, I promise. <laughs> that unicorn cigar. <laughs> Byron 19. So we're oh. smoking the unicorn. The unicorn's horn? That'd be a good name for a, a cigar. That unicorn's works. horn? Yes. So what? It, what is this? It's the uh, Byron 19 Grand Poemas. Mm. Uh, six by fifty-six. This is my oasis all day. My favorite stick. Mm. So far, I tell you what, I'm not gonna uh, debate that in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Because right off the bat, I was like, "Wow, wow." Ecuadorian rapper, and that's that's all we know. That's all we know. Uh, all the rest is undisclosed. Mm. Uh, that's good. Um, so uh, we can just jump right into it, uh, as most of our listeners know, cigar aficionado publishes their top 25 cigars of 2017. Uh, do you guys know the, some of the process behind that? I know Dave Savona, we've been trying to get him on the show. He's the open invitation. We need to work on that in 2018. Yeah. Uh, I know he's been on other shows uh, as well. Tournament style, right? Blind, blind smoking? It's blind. Yeah, it's a blind it's, tasting tournament style, I think yep. is a great description. They're numbered, mm-hmm. right? They number them individually. Well, and then, if they're blind, they have to put some kind of yeah, sure. moniker right, right, on right. They number them. And We've then, done blind test, uh, taste testing. Taste testing? Mm. T- blind tasting? Blind tastings. Blind tasting. Uh, here on the show. Testing the tastings mm. as well. Uh, here on the show in the past, we probably need to get back to that Yes. as well. There's a lot of, as you were saying, Joel, like, there's a lot of coordination that has to happen when you're doing the blind tasting. Someone's got to remove the bands. And whoever's acquiring it and removing the bands obviously knows right. what the cigar is going to be, so they can't participate in the blind tasting. So right. that's yeah, the, part uh, of the problem. Panel of six, if I'm not uh, mistaken. That's why I've heard. Yeah, that's that's. I, and I think that's a great way to to do it. To be honest with you, I, I think blind uh, tastings are a good thing, and I'd like to do more of them. Again, it's just the logistics thing. Outside of the three of us, we got to find someone with some cigar knowledge, <laughs> right? Not just cigar knowledge, but good organizational skills right. and we ourselves have to have pretty good or- organizational skills to be able to make sure we know that i'm smoking number one and mm-hmm. type up my notes and things but i i think we could pull it off are we doing are we stogie geeks doing top 10 or top 25 or are we doing our individual ones how do you want that i done? think we should do the top 10 lists for each host for like next so, week yeah so for each host for next week okay great yeah, next week. <laughs> so i put pro- well, uh, so i provide my top 10 joe d provides yes. his and then go far from there okay right okay just Let's for 2017 just for 2017 okay. cigars release the way we do it is cigars released in 2017 Okay. Any uh, specific parameters, boutique versus classic, or is it a free for all? As long it was as it was a new release for 2017 is historically okay. how we've done it. Obviously, Cigar Aficionado does it differently. Sure, um, but I like to review and, and pick our favorites from the year. Okay, 
I know you up for the still, task? Let's do it. Game on. It's an interesting strategy because how many new releases are going to come out you know, with FDA? Right. I think we've seen a decline in the number of new releases, have we? I, I've certainly noticed that. But yeah, I've that, that that that's been the theme. You know, mm. it, it, if you were to take say the last five years, I would say it's been on a a, a decline the last two. Mm. You know, which if they release or kind of uh, make sure that you know uh, that. The predicate thing gets moved, or however they solve that, I think you're going to notice it start going back up. Well, and the the interesting thing too is if we we do it like Cigar Aficionado does it, and we say we're just going to keep blind tasting and whatever cigars we happen to smoke, whatever we, I don't know how the selection process of what they actually review, because they're not likely in a given year with six people smoking every different type of cigar in existence in every size and wrapper and blend. True. Right. There is uh, some type of process, obviously, to whittle that down. Right. Um, and I'm not sure what that process is exactly. I, I don't it's think that's available. I haven't, uh, haven't yeah. seen or heard that anywhere. How? So, but then what you end up with is one, like the number one cigar uh, that they chose, of something being extremely limited. Right. Yeah. And, and, and again, when we've done some of these lists in the past on Stoey Geeks, we'll pick like our top five favorite cigars we s- smoked in the year or whatever. And it's like a lot of it is like, the, like you said, that you're a unicorn, right? right. Like they can be sometimes hard to find mm-hmm. or sometimes just not in production. Haven't been in production. Like the pork tenderloin that <laughs> Joe Hollywood loves so much. Since my humanor calls to him every single time. <laughs> He's, I was uh, easy on you on, on the past, <laughs> the past eight weeks. That bundle just calls to you uh, every time. Yeah. It's so funny. Cause every time I see, actually I was here, over last week, you mm. you weren't here, and I guess you had done some maintenance on the humidor, and and, Dude, I, and a couple of your production crew was asking questions. I'm like, I, see I, that I, package I right there? That's the one. That's the all you need to know that humidor. Did you I figure it out struggles. yet? No, I'm still somehow leaking humidity out the bottom of my humidor. Well, you've already uh, checked the front and the, and the, the doors, the I, latches. I, I, I right? Could, I won't bore our listeners with the details of all the you things. You check it front to back or back to front? I checked it front to back, top okay. to bottom, back to front. I mean, it got a full work down. I probed it, smacked it up, flipped it, rubbed it down. <laughs> I came in and it was taped. I was like, damn it. Yes. Right? I put gaff tape over the... I had my flashlight like in the door cracks to see like where most light was being let in. Fingerprint ID. I, I don't it, know. Yeah. It's just... I don't know what is going on with it. I'm really... I like that it's... Uh, it's up and presentable for our listeners too. It is. Done, We're going to uh, do a human or walkthrough. Mm. Yes. Um, if I don't take them all out and put them back in coolers because that thing's just not working well, correctly. What's the humidity down the bottom now? What 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 is that reading down there now? Sixty nine point eight. Get out. That's the temperature. What's the top? No number? humidity. Get out of here. Oh no, that's temperature. You're 60. right. Sixty point eight. Sixty point eight. <laughs> yeah. Why is it sixty at the bottom and seventy up at the top? Mm. Right. It's reading seventy up at the top in the red number. I guarantee yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? How, I don't know. I don't know. He rises. How are we know, doing this? The, the top twenty-five Scott Fisher. Are we going twenty-five up or, or start? With oh, the I best? don't. Do you want to talk about every single one of them? Well, I I, I think we should at least touch upon every single one of them because <laughs> I think some of our listeners might uh, have never heard of some of these. Okay, that's a good. So good we should talk. at least we should at least touch upon it. Well, let's talk about the top five. Okay. First, you, I think. Okay. Right? Sure. Like, and uh, I think it's important what I'd like to do is offer our opinions. I think all of us have probably smoked everything in the top five, maybe pretty close to the top ten. Y- eh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, six through ten start to get a little dicey. Six uh, through ten? The y- Cuban, uh, the bowl by there. Uh, yeah, well, we can we can range for that. But anyway, uh, yeah. Um, oh, well, acquiring them is different. Right. Yep. I just, Well, so let's start with five. Yep. And work our way back down to one to okay. give some people some guidance on whether or not they should be, you know, seeking some of these out. Okay, let's do it. So the number five is the Alec Bradley Tempest Natural Centuria. Mm. Uh, it's a seven by forty nine. Uh, I'd call that a Churchill. Uh, Honduras. I've smoked Tempest in the past. I, I mean, it's not one of my my go to smokes. Not one that I reach for. Nope. I don't know that I've smoked uh, this size. Oh, the Centuria is the size, okay. Um, I don't know if I smoked this size. Mm. I've had it. What's your take on it? I've had my my take on uh, Alec Bradley um, with with the Tempest. I remember uh, a couple years ago, what I mean a couple, talking off the top of my head, six, seven years ago, when that original blend came out, I was all about this stick, all about it, all about it. And then when they've um, 
come out with this again, uh, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not digging it. It's that I thought it was around longer than no, I'm six or seven years. I'm trying to think. Like it's not nah, maybe it was, not. No, nah, it's maybe we're, thinking like, of 2012. Different. Yeah, it's probably about six or seven years. Because I, I know my good friends at Joyles um, have a good relationship with Alec Bradley and always had plenty of Alec Bradley. Mm -hmm. And I know that you know Paul certainly gave me some older ones, and there's been a lot of different Alec Bradleys floating around. Yep. And some of the vintage stuff was really good. Mm -hmm. That's what I remember. Like, yeah. If Paul would go back in and like take out something that was like 10 or 12 years old, it'd be like, yeah, that's, it's, what's, that's yeah. actually really good. There is a difference. I'm, I haven't really been too keen with this company and what happened or what they did or if they... Re they cha it changed. They re oh. they re-blended for okay. sure. Gotcha. Uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not really too too up on, on Alec Bradley, but I remember sitting with the rep probably two two years ago explaining that. Have you ever had some of the original Tempest? And he's and, and he was like, yeah, you know, and, and had it. And I'm like, what happened? You know? Because uh, how, especially for me personally, um, pre-Stogie Geeks, uh, pre-co-hosting uh, Stogie Geeks, I always judge the cigar by when there's an inch left. I've said this all oh, yeah. throughout last year. When there's an inch left, and you're smoking it down to the nub, and you just want a little more. bit more, yeah. more, you know? Yep. And I remember when Alec Bradley originally released those, that, it was like that for every single stick for the Tempest for me. Yep. Especially <laughs> the Tempest Torpedo or the Robusto. I was all over it. Then they they had a Maduro blend. I just didn't enjoy it. Yep. Uh, then they switched some stuff, and then, and then they've got to this newer blend that had made the the ranking of uh top five you know uh like i said the rapper is honduras the binders honduras indonesian rapper filler is N nicaraguan with with some honduras in it and it just it just oh, yeah. it just doesn't it, speak to me it says right here um this is was to be their full-bodied offering more than 10 years ago mm. <clears throat> honduran mm. and nicaraguan fillers my humble opinion and like i've always said the views expressed in this opinion in our story geeks management staff, it's it's not the original blend. Mm, that's coming from me. Right? I don't know about you guys. That's coming from me and my palate. Well, inevitably there's some tweaking that happens over time, but Sure. Sure. Have you had it, Joe? <clears throat> Negative. No, it's not a company I, I migrate to at all. Mm. Um maybe I will now that it's uh, it's out there. Do I partake in uh seeking out some of these some of these so called gems? You know, buy into the hype? I probably will. Now, well, number four on the list uh, mm, is interesting. It's amazing. Bolivar Bellicoso Fino. This mm. is a Cuban cigar. Uh, have you both had this particular cigar? Yes. No. Did yes. you get it from my humidor? <laughs> no. Because I got a few uh, no, left. Would... And if you raid in my humidor for these, <laughs> well, make sure you leave me at least one or two. No, no, no. <laughs> I, no, no, no. I, I've, I've, this, you know, I, through my contacts, there's always someone who always hands me one and, or, you know, happens and whatnot. And this, this is at least a, a two or three times a year for me where someone would come out of my woodwork and yeah. just say, Give you a Cuban hey, cigar. You right. know, but in, in, in they're always either Monte Cristo number two, which mm -hmm. is my favorite, or the Boulevard. And uh, it, it's just, I mean, if you've never had a chance to have one, you know, if you have the means, try to seek it out. You know, it's, 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 it's it just, it's just, it's not strong. It's balanced well. It's not mild either. I mean, it's good, Ooh. solid, medium. Like, a, I find it to be, this one, but in particular, the Bellicoso Fino from Bolivar, to be a little stronger than some of the other Cuban cigar offerings, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But it, it just, it just, it gives you a balanced, a balanced um, pro, uh, profile for sure. Slight box press. I think it's just a they pack them a little tight in the box. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. I yeah. it's pretty. I think it's pretty neat. Yeah. I also what someone told me once too was uh, there's like a a smaller size, different size in the the Bolivar line. And I remember I was looking at some of the like other smaller sizes, and I was told to spend the extra money get the Bellicoso Finos because they're a little more expensive. Uh, and I did, and I, I I don't know what the box date on the the box that I had was, but they they were all freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. Probably only have two or three left from that <laughs> that box. Trust. Um, it's good stuff, though. It's safe to say. I don't that. know how they're smoking this year. And again, this is a representation, right? Of I would assume they're box dating them uh, for this year. Hopefully. 
Uh, we've all had Oliva Serie V. That's what I was just going to say. It's safe to say we've all had number three. Number three. Great stick. Uh, Oliva Serie V. Uh, haven't had a, an Oliva Serie V in a while, mm. to be honest with you. And I, what, this Bellicoso size, 5x54 Bellicoso. It's interesting how there's two Bellicoso stuffed in here. Have you guys had this particular size? Negative. No, not that particular size. I think I've had every other size by uh, the Oliva V, which is it's always a solid stick. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, performs well. And it's just, Oliva is just one of those brands that uh, for the price point, you can't go wrong. You know, um, I think it's one of those uh, you know, made, uh, made for enjoyable smokes, solid price point. It's always, it's always I, a win. I also consistent. think that they're very consistent. It, 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 every time I've smoked an Oliva, regardless of the series, like you know what you're getting. Performs They've done well an amazing job with consistency right. uh, at Oliva. And it, I was talking to the local Oliva rep. Todd Kip, Coombs. What's his name? Todd Coombs. Todd, yes. Yep, good, um, good guy. And we were talking, uh, I was actually buying some, some stuff, which I'll maybe talk about later. Uh, and he was saying that... Some of the ones in the Oliva line that don't get a lot of attention. Yep. I think that series G line, especially in the Maduro, have got a couple of weird sizes in there that are really good. They had this one time in the Maduro. I don't know if they still make it because I don't see it ever in the store. I think he did say they still make it, but it was a G size. It was a Presidente. Okay. It was like a, it's like an eight by fifty-two box pressed, and it was in the Maduro. I mean, the thing is massive. Actually, I've got that that G that I'm reviewing uh, a little bit later. Yeah, awesome especially. smoke. Yeah, awesome, awesome smoke. smoke. And they've also got the, the special G, the small little yep. one. Those are good, too. Uh, and those are very reasonably priced right. in the market today and always very consistent. I'd like to get my hands on some of those Presidente sizes and age them up. I think mine were, were aging for a, a while. And uh, years ago on the Stogie Geek Show impressed some of the other hosts with them, which yep. who were not very easily impressed. That's well, as we, we're pretty... Much not easily impressed today either. Got a bunch of the uh, the Churchill size that I've had aging for a little bit, so I'll bring those in. Uh, mm. Enjoy for the boys. Absolutely. What was number two? P- uh, Padron series nineteen twenty six number two natural. I I I don't know how you pick. I mean between I, I mean if you're gonna name uh-huh. a number two cigar of the year and it's from Padron. I, I struggle. I'll admittedly struggle. Uh, is yeah. to how you, how you pick, dude. Like I've got a box in there. The number nines, the newer short robusto. What do they call that one? I don't even remember now off the top of my head. Uh, I got a box in there. Like I, I smoke. I'm just like yeah. And then I'll go buy a natural. I'm like ah, it's really good too. Like I don't know how you'd pick. Right. But right. And where where I struggle is how you know uh, you you. You, where, where, where you go into the three, four, and five stick. And uh, if we were just doing top five yeah. and picking a different order of just the top five, I would have them in a slightly different order. Yep. You know, that's just, that's just my opinion. That's assuming you've smoked the number one. I don't think the large majority of people might not have smoked the number one. Mm. Nope, I haven't. Have you? <clears throat> Uh, no, I don't have any more. I don't know what <laughs> you're talking about. Never heard of this cigar before. This is the, Artur- number one is the Arturo Fuente Don Carlos Eye of the Shark. Mm. This is that shark uh, size that we know and some of us love mm-hmm. from uh, Fuente. Uh, this is a Cameroon wrapper, five and three quarter by 52 in that Bellicoso box pressed shark size that you can sometimes find Opus X in that size. Uh, you can also more regularly find the shark size uh, in the Anejo line, which I've, I've bought several boxes of. And yep. I have to admit, some boxes, uh, years are better than others in the yeah, Anejo. The, shares, the 17? I don't think I bought any in 17 okay. of the Anejo shark. I didn't see them in the stores, to be honest with um, you. I'm talking about, talk about the regular Anejo. Oh, you want to know if I've got some of these Eye of the Shark uh, releases? Yeah. No, Maybe. Maybe. Certainly not in that humidor. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Sometimes. <laughs> so I did. Um, when these came out last year, must have been last. Did they, these come out last year, right? Uh, 16. Yeah. Yep. So I did buy maybe a fiver of these. I must have bought maybe five of them and smoked one last year when they first, first came out. And I was like, wow, that's really kind of underwhelming. Like, I don't 
get a whole lot of flavor. It's kind of flat. Like maybe I'll let that rest kind of thing. Yep. And I know that Stokey Sandin used to come on the show. I, now I vividly, because I got number one, I was like going back through my memory banks, right. like any information I could uh, recall about this cigar. I remember him and I talking, going, did you smoke that? He's like, yeah, I smoked that. I'm like, do you think it was good? He's like, it was just like kind of, he had the similar opinion to me. Like, yeah, it was kind of, kind of flat and I didn't, I didn't really get into it. I'm like, yeah. So I set the rest down. Before this list came out, it had to be sometime in November, early December, before the list was published. I uh, got my car and I lit one of these up and I started smoking and I'm like holy crap this cigar is freaking awesome I'm like wow I really wish I could get more of these like I'm, I'm really digging I got maybe two left maybe one left right. in my humidor <clears throat> and then the list came out and I was like well uh -huh. I agree with the number one like I could kind of see that like that was really freaking good mm. and now they are smoking way better than when they first came out that's just my opinion my experiences with it, uh, and you know, Stogie Santa corroborated my story, at least right. in theory. I don't know if he'll uh, go back on that. Probably not. Uh, I don't know if he smoked one recently, but have you guys smoked this cigar at all at any time? Not at all. Yes. Uh, yeah, I've had it. So. When it first came out. Yep. And what was your opinion when it first came out? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like okay. like like it was it was uh, you know, Arturo Fuente delivers a certain um, respect when I have that yeah. brand and expectation and it didn't it didn't like slight my expectations it was just like okay it's out to Fuente, it's great cool this wasn't phenomenal that was my takeaway at the time it have i had out. one that has aged i usually don't have anything that's aged yeah. so you know it, it came out the same time that don carlos robusto the special don carlos came out and I, I was so high on those cigars and still am. And we smoked yep. one of those today. Yeah, those are awesome. That could easily have been right. no, number one in my yeah, opinion yep. as yeah. well. This one was somewhat more like refined, like just the sweet flavors. and t Like it just, it came together really nicely. And again, I didn't know I was smoking the number one cigar of the year. I had no idea. Right. Um, and, and now I can see. And of course now they were sold out. Stores that got them that I spoke with were sold out before the ratings came out. That's like it. they came in. Yeah. They sold their whole stock. Maybe the store got a couple of boxes if they were lucky, maybe one. Right. They were sold out <clears> even <throat> before the rating came out. Now that it's red, like, forget it. I, I feel like you're never going to find this cigar. Every list has their own, you know, specific format. Uh, for me, it's going to be that availability has to factor in. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. For me, anyway, it just uh, yeah, to reach the, uh, the masses and um, see what the, you know, the grand uh, view of any particular stick is, it could be accessible for everybody. Yeah, well, it's like last year's, right? That LFD yeah. that came out, and then, pff, and no, you know, it was till March that we were able to start getting them again. Right. I bought a box when they you know. I happened to score a box. Those were a little more readily available. Yeah. In the terms of they were just kind of hitting the shelves almost. Mm. Purchased all so. singles, but probably the equivalent of two boxes, you know, worth. I just that was a good, I mean, that, bought I them up, that was spoke good. them up out yeah. of every shop I went to that had them. The, I thought the bowl was good. In no comparison to this year's number one. Sorry, LFD. Love you guys. Great cigar. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'd smoke it all the time. Don't get me wrong. But this one was just unique and special for me in terms of the flavor profile. Once you had that year of age on it. Once I had that year of age on it. Right. Which now would be interesting to go back and smoke mm -hmm. the, uh, the Indonesian bowl, right? That's what yep. it was called. Yep. Uh, a year later. It's in there somewhere. I think it's... The, is that green and... Yeah, it's green. It's, oh, green, yeah, it's, 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 call, yeah. it's calling me right now. Yeah, it's right okay. there. It's right on the bottom <laughs> yeah. shelf there. Nice. Yep. Maybe for segment number two. Although, I, I tell you what, this Byron is friggin' fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's smoking slow, too. I can see yep. we're not really like plowing through them. Mm -mm. Um, number six, Ashton Symmetry Bellicoso. Yeah, and I think we've smoked these. Uh, yep. The My Father, the Judge, that's certainly been around as well. Yep. Mm. Um, but the uh, Guardian of the Farm, have you had that? Uh, what is the Guardian of the Farm? I, I have not. I have not smoked that either. What was that, number 13? Uh, eight. Number 8. Number 8. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Let's jump oh. to number 8. Okay, so all right. So my father, the judge, you've had that? I've had that. You've had that, right? Yeah. You've I had mean, that? had the judge. Before. They have them over there at Old Firehouse. I've had them. Okay. I reviewed it over the summer. I was like, I, I liked it. I mean, I did give it a fiver yep. off the top of my head. You know, I did give it a fiver. It was, it was, it was you know, again, if we could only choose... Out of these 25, I would put them in. Yeah, re-rack them a little bit differently. I, I would definitely re-rack re, re them for sure. <laughs> um, but anyway, we're on number eight now. Which one is this? Number eight? 
Yeah, number eight the is Guardian a, a of the Farm. Collaboration between Max Fernandez and Kyle Gellis. Kyle's, of course, the owner of Warp Cigars, mm. uh, which I, I plowed through a bunch of his cigars yeah. uh, since I've last been on the show. Yep. Friggin' love them. In fact, I need to get back and buy more. I bought kind of a sampling yep. to kind of resample the line, and he's got some in there that are just mm, scrumptious, scrumptious cigars, in my opinion. He makes some good stuff. So I'm going to have to try this one out. And good for him. Kyle's a small boutique. Warp is a, uh, Warped Cigars is a small boutique shop, as indicated by Cigar Aficionado. I've not had this Villiger. Have you guys? No. This is the uh. Flor de y- Yinclan Robusto. Mm. Yinclan? Is that how you say that? Sure. When did that come out? Uh, Plenty of hype behind it, though. Reintroduced to the market in 2017. Okay. I don't know when it was originally. Yeah. Interesting. I haven't haven't done that one either. I've been kind of out of the loop lately too, so I apologize. I have smoked Partagas. Lusitanias are good. Lusitanias uh, is Cuban seven uh, and five eighths by forty nine. Lusitanias are really good if you can get one that smokes right. To be honest with you, <laughs> those larger Cuban cigars, man, like they just don't. Uh, the this particular one, Partagas Lusitania, tends to be plugged. Yep. We got some new world in there. What else is uh, that's interesting caught your eye in this? Uh, we're on like twelve through twenty five now. Yeah, there's some interesting things in here. I haven't necessarily come my way. Number fifteen, the Romeo and Julieta Agent Room collaboration. Yeah, that kind of struck me as interesting. I don't remember smoking you know, that. I I didn't. I I you know it's just how it just got randomly stuck in there. I don't know. Vintage Cameroon from Rocky Patel. That's a that's an old blend. It's been the Rocky's been in the top twenty five for for a while. You know, mm. uh, still seeking out that number one. Yep. Carrillo Dusk. I smoked that. Mm-hmm. I enjoy those. I have. I strong cigar. Oh, I yeah. found those over the summer. Uh, and uh, I've that is at least a once a week for me. Still, I know you had it, and you, had a times, you, yeah. you weren't you weren't as as high as I was on it. I love the 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 the, the when you're halfway through till the end. I love the way it finishes. I just you know I've I've had all that in a bunch of different sizes. The EP six Creo by dust. sixty is the one that made the list, coincidentally. Yeah, yep. yeah. I've I've and, and it's just a good it's just a good smoke. I've Ernesto had. makes a great uh, sixty ring gauge. What else is on here? There's another Cuban on here, Romeo and uh, Julieta Short Churchill. Mm. Oh, love that cigar. Whew. Four and seven eighths by fifty. I could smoke one every morning with coffee, uh. and and do that pretty much from now until the day I die, and, and not get tired of uh, of that cigar. That's how good they are. They're freaking awesome. It reminds me, I need I need to revisit that cigar. Those are tasty. Have you guys had the Short Churchill? No. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Nope. We need to acquire some illegal Cubans <laughs> for the show. <laughs> I've had the the Hoya Black. I I yeah, I, I enjoyed too. that more towards good. To, to, towards the end as well. I'm more on board with the uh, the Hoya Red myself. Yeah, I like the Hoya Red but, a little yeah, better. But, I agree. but the Black has got uh, more hype. Uh, I feel uh, it's more you know in uh, more people's wheelhouses. But the uh, it's in there. It's in the mix. Mm. In LFD in there as well. Double Hero Lancero. Which I think is the only Lancero on on this list. I don't think I've had the I've had the archetypes before, not this particular cigar. Right. Uh, Ventura Cigar and Drew Estate collaboration. It's interesting. I haven't had that one, that particular one. So is that oh wait, Philip I've seen King? these. I've seen that's these. That's King. Um, the distributor, number thirteen. No, is that what we're on. Uh, what are we on now? Number thirteen, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen these. They have these yep. Joyles. I gotta, I gotta stop in there and pick some up. Yeah. No, is it Joyles? I saw them. Jana carries these too. Yeah. 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 I would say the, those are available at that I know of. Uh, by the bay. I was just gonna say that's Jana. Yeah, by the bay and Joyles. Mm, okay. I've had them. Um, you know they're cigars. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like it I don't know. Cigar. How, didn't really move the needle too much. What's your take on this list? Like, like this year's list. I'm not. Uh, you know, like what, what, what's what's your whole take on this? I'm not getting into cigar aficionado, how they do that and, and whatnot. But what, what's your take on this year's list? I just, I, I, 
I just feel that it's mi- I'm gonna come out and say it. I feel that it's missing some really good cigars. Yeah, I and feel like it's kind of all so, over the map too. Right, like, right. There's right. some new stuff. There's some uh, more established, like a Tatawahe Miami yep. in here. Mm. And like, yeah, sure, those are always good. You got LFD, like you know, you got LFD towards. Like, I wonder what Bailey made the cut. I would have liked to see, uh, yeah, that that ten on the fringe. What else was uh, was right there? Right. I just it's uh, like flavor profile. I mean, is it's it's just it's just everywhere. You know, I don't know. Well, I think flavor profile it it should be uh, everywhere. I think that's a, a testament to how they conduct the top 25 list um there's a, there's a lot of stuff on there that i haven't smoked some stuff i haven't smoked in a really long time so uh it, you know it, it's tough to say i i will say that i think there's a lot of new stuff that could rival some of the stuff in this list that i would put up there mm-hmm. a- and some traditional stuff that personally i would put up there but again uh, we didn't you know conduct the same uh structure that cigar aficionado did in creating their list so would any of these be on your top 10? Given a sneak preview for the Stogie Geeks listener? I'm not willing to disclose. No teasers, right? No teasers. Really? Boy. No teasers. Nope. Not going there. Okay. I'm not trying to get you to go anywhere. I'm just trying to... I, was like, I don't know. Like, like things that come to me, like you take the My Father Judge, right? There are better My Father sticks out there mm. than, than the Judge. Feel the same you way. see what I'm saying? So for that to be number seven, yeah, and I'm not picking weird. on any. It just, it just, it just seems, uh, you know. And and then even if you go, uh, let's go to number three, the Oliva V, right? Yep. Very popular, but the Milanio never made that. You see what I'm saying? Milanio was on the list in years past, though. I want to say. Yeah, but uh, I think yeah, like you know, I, I don't know. Uh, Boulevard's always on the list. I'm thinking last year. What? I think it was. Pro- probably, sure. Yeah. You know, Boulevard's always on the lift. Then you got like a Villiga stuck in there. You, 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 the, the New World, which do very well in shops uh, with, 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 with AJ. Rocky's always got a couple in there. Christian, Sealy, he's in there. I don't know. I just. It's kind of feel the uh, then cigar aficionado's the anti boutique. Excuse almost. me? Cigar yeah, but they, was they, almost I a, think an anti-boutique. More uh, so, list. but more so than other years. There's some boutique stuff in here because you get archetype. You get that one from uh, Kyle and Max thrown in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are a couple. It's interesting how they end up very well rounded. There's usually a couple of Cuban cigars in there. There's now a couple of boutiques in there and and some more. We'll sprinkle established. Yep. Yeah, a sprinkling. Not certainly not overwhelmingly uh, boutique, but some. I was excited to see some of the boutiques that ended up in there. Do you feel uh, you feel this particular list, Cigar Aficionado, is almost a year or two, a uh, year or two late on you know some of the uh, some of the brands that you know like mm. could be maybe <clears throat> I don't know like I I I I I'm not going to make an official statement and, and, and unless I somehow knew like what didn't make the cut but there's so many sticks that we. Us three, and I can, I guess I can speak for us three, have had the opportunity to have over the year. Mm-hmm. And you mean to tell me that they haven't even played in this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like that, you, now, if they were 26, 7, 8, 9, uh, you know, 30, top 50, okay, sure. But, you know, there are some sticks that I'm just like, there is no way that that's number X. Mm. Like, every year. Every year. I know. It drives right. me nuts. I, I remember doing this. Radio wise, I remember doing this three years ago, so it would be 2014 13's sticks yeah. of the year, and then I remember doing 14 when I was doing the cigar radio show and going through that. But when I delivered that on the radio, I felt confident with at least 18 of the 25. Yeah, see what I'm saying? So, so I would always be like, okay, 18 of the 25, they're there. I'm looking at this list, and it just it just seems too random. A little yeah. more palatable, yeah. And, I, and and the funny thing is, like, cigar wise, I feel with the opportunity of co-host and Stogie Geeks, I've never been more connected. Yeah. Than, than I was. Well, I and mean, so, you can always just go back and look at our Oasis ratings that came out in in 2017, and that's a pretty good idea of what we thought was smoking great. Right. Right. 
Right. Well, if you're the Stogie Geeks listener, there you go, and you've had the opportunity uh, to review the top 25 uh, cigars for Man. 2017 for Cigar Aficionado, email us. Email Joe D this week. Joe D at StogieGeeks.com. Let us know what you think. He's going to share our comments with us. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go forth from there, I guess. All righty. With that, we'll take a short oh. break. Come back. <laughs> Talk about Stogies of the Week. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. 